With its ever-present role in commerce, education, entertainment, science, and even government, it's hard to imagine a life not affected by the Internet. But what is it? The Internet is open. No one is in charge, yet anyone can contribute, and everyone can benefit. It's ever-changing, and in the process, it's changing the way the world communicates, works, and comes together. It is fundamentally about communication. The Internet makes it possible for us to share ideas, foster creativity, and make connections. In simple terms, it's a network of computers connected to each other. A network of networks, actually. It's a system of hardware and software that spans the globe, connecting computers, devices, and people. This is all possible because of open standards that allow computers and networks to speak to each other the world over to work together, and to securely share information. In the end, it's this sharing that holds the promise of the Internet, one of future collaboration and boundless imagination. The Internet is worldwide. It empowers us. It liberates us. It is us. And this is our Internet. Not only is the Internet ours to use, it has been a collective effort to establish the open standards that make the Internet work and evolve. One organization dedicated to creating and maintaining the open standards that make the Internet work is the Internet Engineering Task Force, or IETF. The IETF is a loosely self-organized group of people from around the world who voluntarily contribute to the engineering and evolution of the Internet. Throughout the history of the IETF, there have been more than 4,000 engineers, scientists, and researchers contributing in the development of an open Internet infrastructure. They could even include you or someone you know. You can participate simply by subscribing to one or more of the IETF mailing lists at www.ietf.org. Don't worry, there are no fees, no strict membership requirements, there's no secret handshake, although that would be pretty cool. What you will find is a strong commitment and mutual curiosity about the Internet's possibilities and potential, where it could take us tomorrow or 10 years from now. The IETF's mission includes proposing solutions to pressing operational and technical issues with the Internet and specifying standards that keep the Internet open, viable, secure, useful, efficient, and convenient. In other words, the IETF helps make the net work. IETF's participants do this by joining working groups, of which there are more than 100. Most of the work is conducted via mailing lists and by drafting suggestions and ideas. Then, three times a year, IETF participants gather for face-to-face -face meetings to discuss these drafts. In these meetings, engineers, developers, and researchers collaborate to develop specifications that may become open Internet standards, protocols that have led us to secure email, chat, online shopping, learning, gaming, downloading, and everything else we all use the Internet for in our everyday lives. Through the development of open standards, these engineers empower us with the tools to unleash creativity and innovation, which make the Internet more than just a collection of computers. The IETF reviews and establishes open Internet standards by using documents called Request for Comments, or RFCs. When an individual or group introduces an idea or identifies an issue, the discussion and eventual solution is published as an RFC. Anyone can submit a proposal for an RFC. The list of RFCs submitted over the years tells the history and the evolution of the Internet. For example, RFC 1 was written in 1969, a momentous milestone in the path that led us to the Internet as we know it today. Since then, there have been more than 6,000 requests for comments, many that lead to the Internet standards that enable and facilitate everyday activity, such as email. Today, more than 3 million emails are sent every second. Chat and video conferencing. It is estimated that by 2013, 75% of all organizations will use teleconferencing to do everyday business. Downloads. Mobile devices alone download millions of apps a day. And of course, all of this has to be done securely. And that takes even more open Internet standards. What's the next big Internet thing? The answer may depend on the next big idea. 
and all the RFCs that describe it. Let's take a look at why open standards for the Internet are so important by exploring something we all do every day. Email. Today, you're mailing your grandmother to congratulate her on her latest skydive. Your words seemingly fly from your laptop to hers in mere milliseconds. What really happens is your email gets minced into packets of information, takes one of several routes to your email server, then to your grandmother's email server, and almost magically gets reassembled on your grandmother's computer. But it's not magic. It's open standards. The simple act of emailing requires many open standards to recognize, parse, transport, route, connect, deliver, and display your message. There has to be some protocol that lets computers, devices, and networks talk to each other and work together. For example, you're on a PC. Your grandmother is on a Mac. Different devices, different platforms, different networks. Thanks to RFCs and open standards, however, they all speak Internet. Between 1971 and 2011, there have been more than 400 RFCs outlining the task of email, pages and pages of documented standards and Internet expertise that make it possible to do something we all take for granted 284 billion times a day. Now, consider that the bulk of this work was accomplished by volunteers, people who had the technical expertise and dedication to donate their time and energy to improve the Internet for all of us, to use, share, play, work, and learn on our Internet. To learn more, please go to the Internet Society at www.internetsociety.org.